how to connect an external antenna to a Nighthawk M6. Keep it simple. Ah, that's not going to focus, is it? Keep it real. Okay, so I am here at home. It's a Friday night. Um, and I've been having a question quite a few times about external antennas onto a Nighthawk M6. So I thought, let me do this video. Um, it's going to be a live upload that I will do. Um, tomorrow, which is Saturday, the 16th of July, I intend to go to Hallett Cove and, and then actually just demonstrate antennas connected to an M6. But for now, I want to do the actual connectivity and just so you could see what actually happens. So that when I go to field, I don't have to show you how to. I can just say, yes, it works, which is, of course, the plan um, for now. Um, this recording, as I mentioned before, I will do now and I will upload it as is. So this is just raw and real and this is going to be what it is with all my boo-boos and mistakes and, and times waiting. So if you want to watch this video, please, it's not the perfect cut, but it is the cut smooth through as we record this thing. I am recording on a GoPro as well. So what I do here, I will show sometimes to the GoPro, which then in the final cut that goes online will be a better version. What I have with me is, of course, my new Nighthawk M6. It has a Telstra SIM card in it now, so it does connect to 5G if it feels like it. Now, that's a bit of a contentious word to use, but sometimes when I boot it up, it wants to stay on the 4G. Sometimes when I power it up, it goes to 5G, and it's all good and well, and I'm, I'm, you know, I, I take what I get with it. What I have learned, though, is sometimes when you switch between external or internal antennas, it's worth restarting the device so that it sets it up new and communicates with the network. And I think that's a key thing for me, starting with that intention that you don't plug it in and you immediately see the difference when an antenna is connected. Yes, I can try and hack it to a way that I could see yes or no the antenna is connected, but often you have to restart the device in a new setting and say, okay, well, this is it, this is what I have today. And that's, that's one thing for me to remember. Um, what I have with me, I have an x 2, which I will take to Hallett Cove on a um, speaker, speaker tripod. That, that's part of the, um, one of the caravan solution kits that we have is a nice directional antenna that you can connect to either the um, Teltonica RGT 360 or the 950, or you can just take the antenna with two TS9 pigtails, um, two S9 pigtails that you will plug into a Nighthawk M6 or M5 or M2 or any of those devices as well. Um, the other option, of course, is my good old faithful pink caravan. So this is still the same setup that I always have. So what I just want to demonstrate in this demo is basically a MIMO 312. I always use the 12 because it only has two antennas and that's the two antennas that will be useful for an M6. It's a 4G and a 5G ready antenna. So this antenna does everything that you want to get done in a sub 6 5G frequency. Also does 4G and if there's only 3G coverage it will also do the 3G coverage for you as well. Um, on the inside this is of course now a so called roof mount antenna. Um, you connect it and then on the inside with my I've had many comments about my cable route, so yes, I have awesome cable routing and everything. Um, it's not gonna be on screen, but this is the antenna that I will connect, so whenever I use my antenna ports, that's the two antenna ports that comes out of this kit here that, that's out of screen, but standing next to me. Um, I am joined by my co-star today, Stella. Um, she's just enjoying the, um, the heater, so that's that for now. Now, okay, so, the answer to the simple question, how do you connect an antenna to an M6? Can you connect an antenna to an M6? Of course, very easy. Um, so you have the uh, M6 by itself, uh, just go to show. So there's the, the front of it. Um, and then on the side where you have the ethernet ports, I'll just show that here, you have the two little clips. So the two little clips are basically, let me just go closer. Um, uh, yes over here and over here, the little slide doors. And you would basically just drop them down. So this is different from the previous ones. Not a rubber cap, it's a sliding door. So you lift the sliding door and you see if I can get it in focus. It's two exposed TS9 connectors, uh, not in focus. Shows my face. Um, right, that's in essence all there is to it. You would take the TS9 connectors 
um, two little tiles that we have there and you plug them in and it gets a connection now the simple test that I can do is basically stop off <laughs> is basically to connect the cable without an antenna to the TS9 to the actual modem itself and you'll see a drop in the signal it's an experiment it sometimes works it sometimes doesn't work just to show the actual context I'm going to re use the mobile app to connect so that on the final edit you will actually see the activity as it happens on the screen so I'm just going to connect this to my um, my device Let's do record so this is recording and just check that it's connected to the correct device okay car scope or the m6 connected so now my phone is connected using the wi-fi from the m6 so i can now go to the actual mobile app um, on this video you'll just have to trust me that's what i'm doing um, and i'm in uh, well it's authenticating just try again it's going signing in i'm in so now it's telling me everything, dollar left and so forth. Uh, right, I would go to settings on the app itself and I would go to network and I would go to advanced info and it tells me RSRP is a minus 100 but it's also telling me I'm on band 28. That's the setting now. So that's always one thing that you need to look at, band 28 or band 3 or whatever your local band is because sometimes it switches bands and when it switches bands, the the number, the RSRP would be different and it would mean something different. So to me now it says band 28 minus 100. That's what I have here at home. That's all I can live with. Fine. That's, it's not great, but it's functional. Um, if I were to connect the two TS9s, I should get a different reading. Um, it's jumping around. It's now minus 98 um, and 6 dBm signal to noise. So it's not totally crazy. Basically, what I would do, and I'm just going to do it closer to the screen so you could potentially see it if it stays in focus. There's the little socket. You plug it into the socket. You just push it in gently. Connect it, and you connect the other one. Don't ever think about using a splitter. Use two cables or use one cable. Connect it into that hole. Push it in. There's still a little bit of a gap, about a millimeter gap. Now it's out of focus. And that's it. But now I have the Nighthawk connected to nothing. And it looks for the antennas that are missing there. That's basically the problem. But that's fine. That's what we have. That's what I want to show you. Do that. Um, I lost my recording. I'm just going to turn on my recording of the screen again. It now does say Telstra 5G, so it's really looking for a 5G signal. Um, so the readings are different. It now says RSSI, not RSRP anymore, because it's, it's switched to different technology and the readings are different. And it says LTE band 3. And it's really looking for something. It may be using the antennas on the inside because it um, kind of disconnected from the external antennas. And that's what, this is where it gets hard to judge exactly what's going on because this thing is also switching between what's available on the inside and what's on the outside and it says well these out external antennas are now rubbish we need to do something different and our RSRP is yeah this is what makes this very hard to demonstrate in a place where the signal is good but this is the principle I want to show you this is how you connect it um, I'll do a quick speed test and we get speedtest.net go It is struggling because there are no antennas. But now, what you would do, I have the antenna as is. I have these two. This is coming from the antenna. I'm just going to plug them in to my pigtails. And this is what you would get from RF shops. You would get an antenna, you get the pigtails, and they plug in together. So I will screw them in and see what we get. plug them in now what you have is 
NITORC connected to the pigtails, connected to the SMA connectors that is attached to the antenna. Let's see what we get. Uh, again, screen recording stops, so I'm just going to record the screen. Ah, right, let's see. Not going to be my best video ever. It's more real. <laughs> um, I'm going to the mobile app. Now, RSRP is minus 95. It's using the antennas. It says it's on band 28 again. So we have a connection. If I go to speedtest.net, Forty-six milliseconds. There we go. I got a connection. That's working well. This device connected to these antennas, functional as is. So I think that's that's the key thing for tonight. It's not about what technology, what amazing results we can get. It is so simple. We have connection TS9 going in there at the bottom, connected to my caravan antenna, or would be connected to an Xbox Two. That's as much as I could show, that's how it works, that's how simple it is. Tomorrow or later this weekend, I will go to Hallett Cove where the signal is weak and where this device by itself will not have a good connection. Then connecting an external antenna will make a difference and we will demonstrate that works well. All I can do, thanks for watching. I'm trying to keep it simple, keep it real. Thanks, see you again soon. Cheers, bye bye.